Hey everybody and welcome to Virtual TrekCon with Sirach Lofton, of course. Hello, hello. This is our awesome discovery panel with David Benjamin Tomlinson. Hello. You know him as Linus, uh, or David Benjamin Tomlinson. <laughs> also, Anna Spear, who is Serana, the Kelpian, and Raven Dauda. Hey. Dr. Pollard, who we're going to make sure is the uh, chief medical officer by the end of today. And <laughs> Yes. Mr. Doug Jones, you know him as Saru, Commander Saru, Captain Saru, soon to be Admiral Saru. Oh, now we, we, yes. we don't know any of that yet. Promotions <laughs> all around for everyone. Yeah, right, sure. I deem it so. <laughs> so great, Doug Jones. Yeah. Hi, Sirac. It's so good to see you again. No, my you cheeks too. miss you. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, uh, Doug is a notorious cheek squeezer, so or cheek cupper, at the very at the very least. <laughs> right, right, right. So if everybody leans in, give me y'all. Oh, 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 there we go. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. there it is. There it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, nose. That's right. <laughs> so. Uh, David, Hannah, and Raven, you guys are all in Toronto, right? You guys are our local hires, and we're hearing that it was very stormy, and now it's extremely hot. Um, yeah. You guys have any idea what it's going to be like tomorrow? It's a hot summer, like Stevie Wonder said, hotter than July. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's good for the skin, though. We're getting a lot of the perfect glow happening up here, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we're, we're all dry out here in California, so I, I, you have you, you have the humidity, that summer humidity there in Toronto. Yeah. But, you know, I always say, though, uh, where there is moisture, there is life. <laughs> yeah. Does that help? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's talk about discovery for a moment, shall we? Um, uh, David, you've played multiple characters. You've been at least... You've been a Kelpian. You've mm -hmm. been two Klingons. Mm -hmm. You've been a Saurian. Mm -hmm. uh, so the good news is that we know that you can actually play a, a human at some point, a totally different character, because nobody's seen your face yet, right? Yes. <laughs> Are you at this point, I'm enjoying the, the prosthetic adventure so much, I'd actually be loath to give it up. Because I'm doing so much learning and growing, and it's such a an amazing challenge and adventure that if they're like, uh, I'd I'd like to keep I'd like to keep playing prosthetics characters as long as I can. You know, there's a a fellow by the name of Jeffrey Combs who's an incredible actor, and he's mm -hmm. legendary in Star Trek lore. And part of the reason is because he gets to play so many different aliens, and they can just keep reusing him over and over and over again. Is that something that you're looking forward to doing? Maybe, maybe beyond discovery. Maybe you can also be in Strange New Worlds. Maybe you can also be in, you know, all the other, you know, Section Thirty One or the other ones because nobody has seen your face. So there is that uh, option of doing other roles. I'd be happy to to show up uh, anywhere at, at this point. <laughs> like, uh, there is something really wonderful about putting on another face or another head and getting to know what that character is and, and, and how they behave and creating relationship and story. So like wherever, wherever it goes, I'm open. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And do you enjoy that process? Cause I know it is such a process of like hours of putting makeup on and getting into it. Is that something that you find comfort in too? Or does it, is it a bit? <laughs> <laughs> We work with some of the best prosthetic artists in the in the business, so I'm extremely well taken care of, and 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 Hannah can attest to this too. Like, uh, we're taken extremely good care of, and and people look after us, uh, and so when we go to we go to work, we're we're totally supported um, all the time. So it's 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 an unusual thing to have to get used to, but when you're in the chair, it just becomes part of your day, and you know. It's like you're working together as a team to make something uh, magical happen. It's awesome. I admire the work that you do and Doug, like just love it. Love how you bring that life through these characters. Just love it. Have no. to jump in there, Ryan. Sorry, babe. No, no, this, this is actually what Sorak and I love 
is people giving us a break so we can just kind of <laughs> you can kind of relax and you know take a sip of our beverages and, and that's right well, this is day what day five of your convention here now yeah. mm -hmm. oh, and wow. you've been going like what, 13 hours a day something like crazy like that yeah right 13 hours a day uh tomorrow's the last day. day it's going to be like a half day like six or seven hours uh well, that, that's the after pool party right yeah well it's gonna ha include that but yeah <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. We tried to make it like a Star Trek Las Vegas or a Comic Con or something like that to where it's just multiple days. So maybe people could stay at home for a few days and give that a shot. I don't know if you guys have heard, but in in, uh, in the U.S., we're, uh, we've got this coronavirus that's not quite under control <laughs> as well as other countries. So maybe if we stay home for a few days, who, who knows what might happen. But uh, anyway... Um, so, Hannah, I did want to ask you, this was something that I was thinking about days ago, which I think now is the perfect time to ask you, since this is the only time we've ever spoken. Uh -huh. um, now, we can all guess and imagine that when you came on set and you were cast as Saru's sister, that they probably suggested that you talk with Doug and, and you know, talk about the character of Saru or talk about Kelpians. Or maybe he just came up and offered it himself, knowing Doug, he probably did because he's a wonderful human and Kelpian and, <laughs> um, and Fawn and all those other things. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he probably gave you advice or they, they said, look, this is what Kelpians are like. Here are the movements that you want to do. Here are the intonations, all that kind of stuff. But once you had that down, then you could infuse Hannah. You can infuse Hannah's spear into... Serana, and I think we all really want to know what part of you did you put into Serana once you got the Kelpian aspects down? Such a beautiful question. I just start crying. I was like, oh. <laughs> no pressure. Sorry. <laughs> um, I mean, I really related to Serana in terms of her spirituality. I wouldn't say that I'm a religious person, but I am a very spiritual person. Um, I think like her intuition, um, I really trust my intuition, go with my gut. And um, I don't know, just listening. I really like, especially with those scenes uh, with Doug and Sneak, where I was just like sitting. I feel like there was no acting required in, in some of those scenes because I was just literally sitting like staring and listening and just really taking in the magnificence that was in front of me. Um, but yeah, I, I guess like tenderness, I tried, tried to infuse like a little bit of my tenderness into her and um, yeah, I don't know. That's a beautiful question. If, if I can interject for uh, Hannah, um, mm -hmm. you also, you took our father's position as the priest of our village. Mm -hmm. So, so that spirituality you were talking about uh, came very naturally to you. I, I, I felt, I felt it was a good fit for you, as a per getting to know you as a person ahead of time. And and Ryan, we did have, we do have Kelpian boot camp basically because we, <laughs> whenever any Kelpians join uh, the uh, the show, I, I I've done it a couple times now where I have to where I walk with anyone playing background Kelpians or or key Kelpian guest stars. They'll have me meet with them to go through the, uh, we'll all wear our boots together and walk around and, and I'll show them the gait and the swing of the arms and the, yes. the, yeah. the, basic, the basics and, and how, how a Kelpian holds what oneself um, and, and what my motivation is for my, pers my personal uh, uh, demeanor and my personal, um, you know, uh, my, my, my persona. But every Kelpian can be different, like humans are different from each other too. So, so develop your own. And uh, but here here's the basics of our of our our ecosystem. But now go go for it with your personality from there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Hannah and, and Can was just like we we were. I Hannah, I don't know about you, but I felt we were, we were brother and sister like when we met in in person as humans. It was like all of a sudden it was like I love you. I love you so much. Oh my gosh. Totally. totally. <laughs> and when yeah. when we were on set, like. Less Doug, like I'd like. Where's Doug sitting? I want to go sit right beside him, <laughs> even if we're not talking to each other. I was just like, I just want to be near him. Like, yeah, like, get in line, oh, Hannah. Oh, right. Right. <laughs> no. but, but, yeah, we, but it, it was comforting to have you. Yes, it was comforting to be near you all uh, whenever we had scenes together. I'll, I'll, yes, 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 yes. 
totally. Just like sitting in, in the presence of, I don't know, just <laughs> being so hot on that beach. Oh, oh and I you guys were in Iceland, right? Well, no, but no, no, no. When you saw when you saw us on our Kelpian village with our on a, the beach outdoor right. scene, that was uh, that was in the, the uh, what was the name of the bluffs in uh, uh, Scarborough Bluffs. In Scarborough Bluffs. Oh, so yeah. you're local still, relatively. Yeah, it, it, in July, and but it, so it was it was that hot, humid thing, and so we uh, I think we had two people <laughs> faint. I'm not crazy, D David. You were there too. D David was was one of our villagers. Um, after after the spell broke and our all of our uh, all of the uh, uh, threat ganglia fell out of the entire village and everybody went through Vahari really fast when we accelerated that process. Uh, David was the first Kelpian to come forward and ask Serana like, "What's going on?" <laughs> 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 and so and, and it was we were walking in the sand with those boots on was was unthinkable. It, it was torturous. It was a calf workout. It, well, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hang on one second here. Uh, our good friend, Mr. Homer Frizzell, mentioned Doug's shirt. So Doug told us why he's wearing the shirt uh, before we start uh, filming. But do you want to let everybody else yes. know? It, it, it is summer, so it's a Hawaiian-style shirt, short sleeve. But it's got Christmas all over it. Uh, I've got reindeer, snowmen, cr Christmas trees. Because I, uh, I the TV has been playing. Um, the Hallmark Channel is, has Christmas in July this week, so F twenty four seven Christmas movies <laughs> on the Hallmark Channel, and I love it. So I'm still, I'm still, uh, I'm on my last day of that. So I thought I would share that with you. Thank you for asking. So that's very sweet. <laughs> As the kids say, you are here for it. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here for it. Okay. <laughs> uh, Raven. Yeah. <laughs> also, because uh, we had a chance to chat uh, before we started recording, but. Uh, you you've got some family members and friends at least that know about Star Trek or excited about Star Trek, but I don't know if you told me if you were a Star Trek fan before this. Were you? I am. I am the original Star Trek uh, with wow. Pike and then Captain Kirk. That was what my mom and I did. Like we sat, watched it. I'd curl up with her and just loved it. Just was hooked from then. Um, and then TNG. That was that was my jam for a while. Um, and then recently, with my uh, with my current partner, um, we've been watching uh, Voyager. So getting into that. Okay. Yeah. Did you know? Did you know this was Star Trek when you auditioned for it, or did you find out after? No, I did. I did know, not in what capacity, but I knew that it was uh, oh. Star Trek, and we have a code name for it and everything. So I, I knew how to prepare. Um, tried not to let the nerves totally take me over. And it was, you know, they just treat it like it's just another gig. Um, but yeah, really excited, really, really excited, and just floored when it happened when I finally got the call. Really? Yeah, yeah it was surreal. It was yeah. I still pinch myself. Like I still, if I show up on set, I look down at the insignia on the ground, and I'm just like touching things, and just like <laughs> it's crazy, it's surreal, it's awesome. Was that first day kind of like when you're like really excited for something, you're super anticipating it, and then that first day you're like, holy, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> like, or was it just like, here I am, world, I'm ready to take it all over? You know, it fluctuates between those things. I was definitely vacillating in that world, but for real, I, I was freaked out, and God bless Dougie, Doug Jones was... <laughs> the first one that I had contact with and the scenes with, and I literally like held on to him for a lifeline. And he is so generous and so wonderful. Like, I mean, we've talked about it before, but the cast and crew are just extraordinary in that they work at the top of their game, but they're so welcoming. Like they provide a space for you to be at the top of your game. And it's just, it's incredible. Like it's, it's, in a work environment that I've ever experienced. And so Doug literally just took my hand and was like, we can do this, you're doing great. Like he was just like, I was like, did my mom pay you? Like, are you like, <laughs> <laughs> like that's it, you know? And, but that's, that's what Star Trek is. And so mm. it's no surprise to me that yes, these are the people who are working and creating it. You know, it's just, it's extraordinary. Raven, you're getting so much love in the comments right now. Oh, uh, I know, uh, great. Sorry, Doug. What were you saying? I was I was going to say uh, about about that, Raven. Uh, uh, you 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 often have walk and talks. Uh, <laughs> those walk and talks are just brutal when you have to, you know, time a conversation 
from point A to point B, and you better be done by the time you get there, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and then and, like crazy syllabic words like um, adrenal. No, no. That was a fun one. <laughs> right. That, that, that was, oh my gosh, we had a piece of dialogue talking about Tyler, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> down the hallway and I was asking questions and she had to, she had to deliver this multi-syllabic word. Yeah. And, and all of us were looking at the script going, ain't no way that's going to happen. Nobody, nobody can get that out of there. Raven, <laughs> Raven, you rocked that line. You never went up on that line. You, I, 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 was, I was looking at you like, I, didn't I ask, like, how did you do this? Every day, every day. <laughs> let me tell you, I researched that word. That word had four pronunciations. I learned it. I was a crazy lady walking up and down my street reciting that, okay? And people were just like, <laughs> there you yeah. go. talking to myself on the street. So, yeah. yeah. No, but, you know, you know it, we, all have, we all have science speak to give in this show. And it, it, we all have to look things up because, you know, it, the, the paragraphs are full of just little <laughs> uh, and, but, but you sh But there even plays a doctor. So she add, add the medical element to that, and you've got you've got a whole world of of, of bless her heart. <laughs> <laughs> I pray every night. Yes. When I say those words, okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you always wanted me to be a doctor, so here I am. Oh. Best oh, person uh, to yeah. watch is uh, Lavar Burton as as Jordy LaForge in Next Generation. Right. He, I don't even know. He did it like he was just talking about oatmeal. Like he would, it would just roll off his tongue and it, oh he, would, he would say things like, like it wasn't just some word that somebody made up five minutes ago, you know? Um, mm. Anyway, Ciroc looks like the technical difficulties are back. What do you say? Ciroc and the modern quark, what? Uh, uh, that's the modem that quark sold me. That's what oh, I'm yeah. saying now. But, <laughs> the modem quark sold me. To me. But that's uh, a one thing I just wanted joke. to add while, while I still have uh, some airtime is uh, how compassionate and caring that Doug Jones is. What a amazing person. It's no wonder that all of you have a personal affection for him because, mm. I mean, within five minutes, he's like, you love this guy. And his mm. heart is so big and he's so humble. And um, I, I really can't say enough good about this person because I think Doug Jones is one of the great people in this world. And in this business and when somebody has that much compassion and cares about your experience and how you do things that much it just it just resonates with you and it makes you just love him that much more oh but i don't deserve you thank you so much sorry I, <laughs> it needs I, to be I, said i have to say it while i can still talk <laughs> <laughs> he picks his battles <laughs> Uh, well, I, I adore everybody in every square on this on this page today. <laughs> I adore all of you. <laughs> you guys are getting so much love in the comments. I wish I could show you them all, but definitely rewatch this later just to scroll through the comments so that you can be like, oh, that's me, that's me, that's me. They love me, they love me. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of this stuff. So uh, Linus, we have to talk about Linus. Okay. okay. Eve England, oh. by the way, out in Wales, very nice lady. Love the sneezing scene with Linus. His eyes are incredible. How do they do that effect? <laughs> um, I didn't notice the effect. Do you know what she's talking about? Uh, the blinking of his eyes. They oh. blink this way and this way, and that's all done. Uh, that's all done in post. So the very funny thing about Linus is when he's on set, his it looks like he's always looking at you because his eyes never close. So <laughs> I'll be sitting in my, my, my cast chair and I'll kind of just be having my eyes closed and sleeping and people will come up and talk to me and tell me some information that I can't <laughs> keep them awake because like the eyes are looking at them. Yeah. So now like halfway through this, halfway through season two, people were figuring it out. So now when someone approaches me, they always put their hand on my knee. They're like, David, <laughs> what is it? So, no, I did want to follow up. Oh, sorry, Doug, were you going to say something? I, I, I love David. I just love him. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I love you, Maggie. You know, he, I know he's, another, he's another tall, skinny uh, uh, fellow and, and rubber bits. And we, we, also, <laughs> we also share a very, very close kinship whenever we're on set together. I love having you there, David. Mm -hmm. He's so comforting to have him around. And yeah, I want you to, David, I want you to tell them what, what your idea was for a, a Saru and um, Linus scene. Buddy, oh. a buddy cop show. Let's have a buddy cop show. 
<laughs> well, because uh, because I, I love our screen time together, and we're you're going to see a couple more moments with us in season uh, three together. Really, uh, but, I, but I want I want I want David that he has an idea that I just love. Awesome. I think it would be fascinating to uh, to walk in and see them discussing strategy over a, a chessboard, and and just you know like just playing a game and casually talking. I think they would share a very interesting perspective, both being aliens on this on this on this uh, spaceship. Yeah. Right. If someone came, if someone came to my quarters with an emergency and like the doors open up and there there we are playing chess like <laughs> <laughs> I would love that more than you know <laughs> with a bowl of blueberries. Bowl yeah. of blueberries. Absolutely. <laughs> have they have they told you what Linus eats? Any any particular thing? Anything different? When I've had to eat on screen, it's mostly uh, greens. So I've I've had a lot of spinach. Uh, a lot of leafy greens that t tends to be uh, what he eats a lot. We see a little bit more uh, in season three of what he eats. We do. And, and, and when, when we do, I, I'm just going to, I'm going to say it. I, it's the, one of the funniest moments of the entire season. I'm just going to say that's, uh, there you go. I love, I love Linus so much. I love <laughs> the show. You know, everybody loves Linus. Uh, that was something where as soon as people saw him, they wanted more and they wanted more. And it was so, it was so fulfilling that you did get more than like, you know, a funny gag at the very beginning. We, we, we were afraid like, that's it. Was that the aliens role? They have a funny alien who does a funny thing and that's it. But they actually expanded your role. And did you know that that role was going to be expanded that much? Or did you think it was going to be another one episode thing like the like some of the Klingon roles that you've done. I didn't know I didn't know what to think. I I was sent an email before season two started, uh, just giving me like we'd like to offer David the role of Linus the Sarian, and I did not know what a Sarian was, so I had to look it up. I was just like, what is this? <laughs> and then I found the the picture of the Sarian from Star Trek the Motion Picture online. Mm -hmm. uh, he was like way in the back of the shot. Very, very different. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, very different. I was excited about that. Uh, to what I, I was excited to figure out how they were going to realize that character now. Mm -hmm. And when I walked into the prosthetics uh, trailer for my first camera test, when I saw the prosthetic, I just I gasped a little. I fell so in love. Uh, it's a such a beautiful work of art. And then finding the character was amazing. And it just I don't know how or why it's all happened the way it has, but I'm really excited and honored and grateful to be a part of it and, and to have a relationship with this character. Well, sorry, sorry. Are, are rarely seen, but they're mentioned very often in Star Trek. And I think you might know. The brandy. Of, exactly, the brandy. When are you going to have brandy <laughs> in your hand? I want to see you <laughs> oh, a snifter, yeah. like a snifter, just kind of like judging everyone. I think at some point there does have to be a brandy, a brandy tip of the hat moment. <laughs> so because it's it's been so much thought, it's been so so talked about. But yeah, it was. I, uh, I think uh, I would love to see Linus get explored more. But there, it's a it's a series that there are so many characters and so much story. So you, you just fit in where you fit in. D David, didn't you all, what, what was the, uh, when we were all sitting at the conference table in the ready room, when I, the episode where I was getting sick and I thought, I thought I was going to die. Yes. Uh, near the beginning of that episode, you, you piped in about your, your own health issues or your, your, uh, yes. your translator went, went off or something. But what was that? I love that moment too. Oh, the, the translator, uh, the translator misinterprets his clicks and pops and doesn't translate it fully into English. That's right. So you, we start out going, blah, 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 and we're all kind of looking at you. <laughs> 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 uh, kind of like, yeah. like what Sorok and I have been experiencing uh, today on this. Uh, Using this technology. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, it's exciting that fans in love Langus as much as I do because, you know, like it's... I love this character. I feel a uh, huge affection for this character. So. Mm, so do we. Uh, uh, yes. Now, Hannah, correct me if I'm wrong. And I know Sirach will because he is a huge Discovery. I mean, he, he watched Discovery like three times each episode, I think Sirach has. But I've twice. only seen him twice. Oh, okay, twice. Also. Okay. And, but I've only seen him once or twice each. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you are now left behind in the past, whereas everybody else is going into the future, right? 
Do you have any idea or do you have any wishes that Serana pops back up somewhere in Strange New Worlds or in Section 31 or in any of the upcoming iterations? I mean, I'm sure if you were, you wouldn't be able to say it, but you're aware that that is a possibility, right? I mean, yeah, that would be a dream come true. I also feel um, like Serana really leveled up. Like she yeah. was piloting a bubble fighter. So I'm like, she's, I don't know, maybe she, she's not content anymore with the quaint life. Uh, you know, I feel like I wouldn't be surprised if we saw her. Um, like you see someone working at a computer and you just see their back and then they turn around and it's her. <laughs> <laughs> a slow motion reveal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And Saru does his classic, like, Serana type. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that'd be amazing. And, and yeah, just like uh, David was saying about Linus, I feel a similar way about Serana, just so connected to her. And, yeah, I think she's just so powerful. And so I wouldn't be surprised if we saw her come back. Here's a comment uh, that we're not going to comment on. <laughs> oh, not gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> not touching that one. Yeah. All, no. of us, all of us are laughing, but we're kind of always terrified of, of spoilers. So. Yeah, and and Hannah, uh going a little more deeply into your character because this is what we Star Trek nerds love to do all day long. Um, a lot of times in order to get into character, people create their own backstories. And I know that the, the producers and writers and, and Doug and the directors, they gave you some backstory on what Kelpians are and what Serana's story is with Saru. But beyond that, did you create more within your mind, you know, what we call our own head canon, just to give you more depth and more motivation and to, you know, properly inspire you to perform? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, in prep for shooting, I would just kind of walk around the river Valley, the, the Don Valley mm -hmm. here in Toronto and just kind of listen to music because Serana is so in touch with nature. I would just spend the day walking by a creek or sitting by a creek or looking at leaves and just day, literally daydreaming about our childhood together wow. and how close we were as brother and sister and how my heart was just broken because he just disappeared. And I never mm -hmm. knew what happened to him. We had some inklings mm -hmm. or worry that he was abducted or had gone through his Baharai, but we never really knew. And we, I mean, me and dad, papa. Um, so yeah, for sure. I, I would daydream that we were super close. And I actually thought, I can't remember if we talked about this, Doug. I actually thought that you were my older brother. But but I can't remember if we talked about it. Well, I, I, I kind of felt that impression, too. Yeah. Well, yeah. because in real life, I'm old enough to be your dad. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, Hannah, you're five years old? Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, uh, so, uh, uh, Hannah, uh, do you remember, because uh, I get asked this a lot, about you and me with our our forehead touch. Mm. Um, uh, and I... Um, I love that moment because we, you and I were. I remember you and I talking about like when we had our goodbye scene when you were about to leave our ship after <clears throat> after the uh, the uh, liberation of our people, and you were about to go back home and uh, and and you were in my quarters and and we put our foreheads together because I was saying please come with us you could come with us for a while and you're like no like I have to go I have responsibilities back home, and our foreheads went together and, and we also that's how we met each other but I think we filmed I can't remember which scene we filmed first mm. but. But we wanted to come up with something that was that was very family. Uh, what would denote a, a family affection that that would be just just for us Kelpians to do? 
Mm-hmm. And, and our foreheads kind of went together naturally. I don't, I don't remember the moment how it happened, how we decided upon it, but it just sort of happened and we were like, love it. And nobody yeah. told us not to do it, right? Yeah, I think it was uh, a new suggestion, Doug. Was it me? Yeah. No, like, I didn't remember. And, I, and um, it was just so lovely. Just, And I don't know if it was just natural putting our heads together or the weight of the prosthetics. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And the twelfth, the twelfth hour of the day, yeah. <laughs> right? Temporary <Yeah>. relief. Oh. <laughs> so sweet, yeah, so lovely. Love that moment too. And that's and how you, that's how creatures become lore. You know, that's how they they get created in Star Trek is these little things that people do. Now, Kelpians forever will be doing that in, in future iterations. Sorry, what were you saying, Doug? I was going was to say also, uh, you talked about about um, Serana's um, evolution from <clears throat> the, the first scene we, I think the first scene we filmed with you, Hannah, because remember, we, we filmed our short trek, uh, The Brightest Star, and episode six of season uh, two, one, one, two, two, two. Uh, we filmed it simultaneously. So we were back and forth between both both sets. I, it was like filming a, a, a feature film. Uh, so, so we were filming our backstory back in time and our current like liberation of Kaminar at the same time on different sets. Wow. <clears throat> and I remember, um, I think the first thing we filmed with you, uh, Hannah, was your, in, in the, the uh, transporter room, you were about to beam back down to Kaminar. Is that right? Yeah. And I, and I remember and I remember looking at you, and Sonequa and I were both uh, at Burnham, and Suri were both watching in the room to watch and say goodbye to you. She was watching over my shoulder uh, our, our little goodbye scene, which was very emotional for me. And um, uh, and and just looking at you, you were so innocent, and looking around at the technology, like what's about to happen? And because you've been beamed once before, but this was just so like I can't believe I'm I'm going to departicalize and then and then show up somewhere else in a minute here. This you look so so innocent and so so uh sweet and we had just been through a lot together so we had to we had to you know drum up our backstory pretty quickly because that was our first scene we shot together Mm. cut to uh you know later in the season uh the finale when you show up in a fighter as a pilot fully advanced and 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 so that that just shows that i mean i thought that showed serana's uh uh her wit her her i mean she was she was more than an innocent sweet soul uh, she also is fierce. Yes. Starbuck, man. Mega fierce. And just to speak to that a little bit too, Doug, I think what you were also seeing of that like childlike innocent wonder was just Hannah, too, being in the transporter room. Because similarly <laughs> to Raven, like, I also grew up watching Star Trek with my parents. And so that was, I got there that day. I was in my trailer, I think, for like 12 hours. So I wasn't even on set for the first 12 hours of being there. Just oh, kind wow. of waiting. And then I got brought to set. Just to, all that to say, the anticipation was built. <laughs> <laughs> I got to set, and then it was just like, oh, my expletive, expletive. Wow, two expletives. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's some like, custom. I'm, <laughs> I'm in the transporter room, just like. Like truly, that was where mm-hmm. I was. That was that was Serana, but that was also Hana. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you say Hana or Hannah? Oh, Serana. A joke, and it was uh, not oh. good. So. Oh, okay. Sorry, I just want to be sure I was pronouncing it correctly. Um, so, well, all that talk of short treks got me thinking. Raven, are we going to see? Dr. Pollard doing like a full, just like a medical bay short trek. I mean, I, I, cause you have enough, enough people for it. You know, there's, there's your character, there's Wilson Cruz, there's Jet Reno who isn't a doctor, but she had the best scene going into the medical bay. I personally, I think the hangnail scene, I don't know if you guys know the one I'm talking about, but I thought I was like, that is the most Star Trek scene I've, I've ever seen. It's so perfect, but I don't, you know, I don't know if you can say, but would you like to do a like a cool medical bay, you know, themed short trek? You know, I'm a I'm a total dreamer, and so yes, all that I can speak to and say is like the dreams that I have, 
and my imagination goes wild. And so, oh yeah, I would love to see Dr. Pollard doing all sorts of things with all sorts of people and beings. <laughs> <laughs> Bring that on. So um, I, I think anything is possible in space. And the more that we learn about these wonderful characters, like there's such a diversity and a richness that we have. Um, to speak to what um, David was saying, yes, there's a lot of stories to tell. And so we understand, you know, um, there's only so much that can be done in that our episode. But yeah, with the idea to shorts, I say, yeah, explore the backstories and the lives of all these rich people that we have that the fans are now, you know, really forming this kinship with this connection with, I think it's just mm, lovely possibilities. And yes, please bring that on. Okay. We're going to be getting that, this comment throughout this entire, I mean, it doesn't stop. Okay. So we might as well just address it. Right. Uh, we, everybody wants you to be the chief medical officer because we know, we know it's not Wilson's character. So then when your character popped up, we say, okay, well, maybe it's Dr. Pollard, but then they start looking at the pips and we all, you know, we're, you know, nerds are a little meticulous. I don't know if you've noticed this, but we're kind of, kind of passionate people. Yeah. Um, cool. Once again, I mean, there are powers that may be that, that control all of that. And um, all I can speak to is that I would love the promotion. I think it would be brilliant and beautiful and, and yes, more please of that. Um, <laughs> we'll see, you know, like it's, it's, it's how things evolve and how things come out. And for me, at the end of the day, I mean, I'm this girl that came from Ottawa, Ontario, this little like, you know, small, small place. And um, to be on Star Trek and to be a part of this legacy in, in this capacity is just brilliant. So um, I, I love where Dr. Pollard is now. And, and there's something that's so exciting to think about the possibility of where she could go with the, with the crew and with her, with her, with her standing and her position. Um, we get to see what a person is made of when they're given more of that, you know? So uh, we'll see what happens. You know, it's gotta be so hard to answer these questions knowing that everything has <laughs> already been shot. You have an entire season that's been shot. <laughs> And everybody's asking you questions that are kind of dancing around the season. <laughs> so thank you guys for yeah. <laughs> answering as best as you can. <laughs> we, love the love. we love the love and we love that there's so much interest in it. Like, I mean, <clears throat> yeah, guys, just send your love to everyone at Star Trek and let them know, hey, this is what we want to see and we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. And, and some, more, some more love on Raven, too. Uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> when, when, you, when, you play, when you're an actor playing a position in authority, and she does, as a doctor, she has a lot to say and a lot. She, she can give orders to people that are above her because of medical, for medical reasons. And she, Raven really knows how to own that authority without, you never once look at her and think like, oh, that's, she's, she's just, she memorized something and she's trying to, you know, beef up her personality to, to deliver that. Never once. I, she, she has owned that doctor since, since day one. And I, I, I love, love being on, I love being on film with you, Raven. I love being on film with you. You really, I mean, it's such an experience and it's, it's such a dream. And to be able to do it with someone as yourself, and as I'm saying, like the whole crew as well, where they support you and yet challenge you, like you gotta bring your game. And it's, yeah. it's wonderful to be held in that way. And, mm. and, and it just goes back to like, I, I wish for, Everyone in whatever your work is, you know, whatever your vocation, wherever your lives take you, if you're able to be into a space where what is reflected back at you is only the best of who you are and what you can be, that's like the biggest gift ever. Like then we go out and we pass it on to others and we uplift other, others in these times that are so challenging, mm -hmm. you know, it's just we help to bolster each other up. And we do that by saying, I see you, I got you, I'm with you, let's do this, let's have fun. And then it's like, oh, the world feels it, you know? So Doug, I love you immensely because I was freaked, you know, it's exciting. It's the most amazing <laughs> opportunity. And you just help to be like, you're here, you deserve this. You like, let's have fun, you're awesome. and. That's not something that a lot of people do just automatically. So I thank you for, for being that, mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. that so that now I can do that to the next person, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Very quickly, uh, <laughs> to interrupt that, uh, there is one, 
one comment that we need to address, Sirach, um, everybody's asking if we could do a guest spot on season four. Uh, <laughs> it'd probably have to be an alien, Sirach. I hate to break it to you, but they are, I don't think uh, I don't think Jake Cisco can make an appearance. <laughs> what do you think? I have no problem with that. I just uh, <laughs> As long as, as if, if I have to wear uncomfortable shoes, I'm going to ask Doug to teach me how to walk. <laughs> okay. It's a, deal. <laughs> it's a deal. We'll put you through boot camp. <laughs> boot camp. Literal boot camp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, you know, no, speaking, I, of, the, I, speaking I, of the comments, too, I, uh, who, who is Garrick? I see lots of comments about Garrick <laughs> and Garrick doing that. What's all that about? <laughs> That's a gentleman uh, played by Andrew J. Robinson. If you know Andy Robinson, from uh, he was also in Hellraiser. Uh, he was in the what was it, Dirty Harry? Uh, but anyway, Dirty he, Harry. Yeah, he played a a Cardassian named Garrick who um, was part of the Obsidian Order. I know these are all foreign words to you guys, probably, but to us, Get it. Bring, bring it, bring it, bring it. And so he's like a spy. So they're saying he's jamming the signal, and he's. He's picking on Ciroc a lot because they're on the same series. Okay, so now all those comments make sense. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We actually just uh, had a panel with him just an hour ago with him and Max Gredenchik and Hana Hate and um, Ciroc as well. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, you know, sp speaking of, of other uh, Trek actors, too, I, I also have a phone. I have talked on the phone yesterday with one of, a, a neighbor. He lives very close to me, uh, uh, Bobby Clark, who played the Gorn. The Gorn in that original Trek series where uh, you know, the, the the fight with uh, Kirk and Kirk and the Gorn, right? Which was hilarious and and, <laughs> wonder, and wonderful and glorious in all its ways. So yeah, Bobby's doing great and fine. And uh, I, I talked to him and his wife on the phone yesterday. Mm. Yeah, uh, the slowest fight scene in the history of fight scenes <laughs> that's known as if you guys have ever watched yeah. <laughs> <It's like slow> <laughs> <motion>. <laughs> anyway, so we've got about uh 10 minutes left here so uh doug has trained us to ask us a particular question uh, because we asked him once before when he was on our show and he said, you know, you should ask that question more instead of all these dumb, nerdy things about <laughs> Just kidding, guys. He would never say that he's the nicest person in the world. Um, but the question is, you know, taking apart, you know, taking, taking all the Star Trek stuff aside, what do you like to do when you're home? When you, what are you passionate about? Do you, you know, like for me, I, I like to garden. I like to grow vegetables. It's therapeutic. It's pleasant. Surprisingly, I had no idea, but I just did it once. And it's, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, is there something you guys do that nobody really knows about and you, you find therapy in it or it's just ridiculously entertaining? Uh, Doug, we, we know you like the Hallmark Channel and Christmas in July, uh, but uh, what it, we'll start with you, David. Um, well, something that I just started doing in the last five weeks uh, is I took up slacklining. Mm -hmm. And it's been in this time of um, not having a lot of places to go and, and sort of like staying distant, being able to go to a park and set up a slack line and spend an hour finding my balance. And, you know, it's sort of, it's very meditative and you're very focused. It's been this real gift to be able to go and get out of my apartment and go to an outside space. And, and, and it's a great for the core. It's great for your concentration. So uh, I'm new to it and it's been a real lifesaver. Yeah, I've, well, got, well, I've got one. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. What is slack lining? <laughs> slack lining is like a two uh, two inch band of webbing <laughs> that you stretch between trees, and then you walk across it. Uh oh, you, you balance on it, and then you walk across it. Oh wow! Okay, we've, and we've seen, and the and the fancy people can like actually like sit on it or kind of bounce on yeah. it. Oh, yeah, okay. we're up to a jump, but uh, I'm taking it very slowly and thoughtfully. <laughs> yeah. Have you injured yourself on it, or have you been pretty safe so far? I've been so far. It's been great. I mean, I only I only uh, rig it two feet off the ground. So if I get into trouble, I just step off. Mm -hmm. But uh, I see that there's like a lot of different, very advanced things that you can do. So I'm making my way carefully along. Awesome. <laughs> what about nice. you, Hannah? Do you have anything that's potentially dangerous that you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, I've been playing it pretty safe. Um, I just like hanging out with my dog, honestly. 
I got my dog in November and she's a rescue and mm. he um, was so anxious when I first got her and it's been just a total treat to see her come out of her shell the past few months. And so I take her for walks and we look at the trees and I watch her play with other dogs and pretty simple, but I just find it so, so relaxing. What kind of dog is it? She's like a mutt. She sort of looks like uh, a greyhound mixed with a pit bull. Wow. Yeah. yeah, so she's a beautiful dog. She's sleeping. <laughs> if I meet a pit bull uh, mixed with a greyhound, I'd probably be glad it was sleeping too. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Pit bulls are the sweetest dogs in the world. I've had a few and they're just, they've got the sweetest faces. Uh, real quick, Tamia Harper says, absolutely love disco. Really respect and admire the entire cast. Thank you for being here. Uh, um, well, Raven, what do you enjoy doing? What's what do, you, what do you do that nobody would know about you? Wow. Well, I love doing a lot of things, but um, I really love being creative with my hands. So mm -hmm. back in the day, it was knitting, and I still am a little bit of a knitting bitty. I love it if I can do it. I'm all about that. Um, but lately, I, I've been working on writing my own shows, like solo plays. Dougie got a chance to see one of them. Um, it was so good. So good. Oh, really? And in it, I nice. created puppets. I, used, I created them out of like a paper mache base. So I really love just getting, you know, flour and water, paper and glue, and just building sculpture-esque type of puppets or masks. So... I'm working on creating a second show and it's going to be filled with puppets. So right now I have like bags of like toilet paper rolls and old boxes and anything that I can just tear up and start sculpting with. So that's kind of what I love to do that not many people know about. What's your favorite creation that you've made so far? Oh my goodness. Um, one of them is a 14 foot tree. It was the tree that was in my last show addicted that Dougie saw. Um, just, yeah, I created it, uh, I should find pictures of it somewhere, but yeah, it was like a You, you made that tree? I didn't know you made that. Yeah, I made that in my mom's living room. She was like, okay. it's so big, oh my god, it's so huge. I'm like, don't worry, we'll put it on stage, we'll move it out of here in a few weeks, don't worry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the type of child I, I am for my mother, so yeah. Um, so that type of stuff, anything that keeps my hands moving in that kind of creative way, I love it. Oh, I was just going to say, I feel like that's some kind of astrological sign thing. I was going to say, what's your sign? But you're, you've got a birthday in two days. Happy birthday, by the way. Ooh, Ooh, everybody wish hey, Raven happy a happy birthday. birthday, birthday. In the Yay, happy birthday, all right. Raven. <laughs> Thank you all so much. All right. <laughs> love you guys. Love you guys. Yeah. Uh, real quick, uh, Hannah, what do you guys think about this idea? Somebody says disco needs an alien dog. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe put some horns on your dog and make her make her a star. Yeah. I mean, Raven could do like paper mache some horns. Horns, <laughs> 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 things. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, here it comes. Oh, there's the love. There's oh, the love. Yeah. Oh. Oh my goodness. Whoa. Thank you guys. Oh, love. oh my goodness. Thank you guys. Anyway. I really appreciate it because I actually have to be away from my family. I'm going off to work. Um, so it'll be like the first birthday in a while that I'll be away from family. So all the wishes. Thank you. I'll be taking them with me. Thanks. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, somebody just mentioned a Star Trek Enterprise uh, thing. She could be like Flocks and keep pets in sick <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, John uh, well, Mr. Doug Jones, what do you like to do? What what do you do when the when the lights are off and the cameras are gone and people right. are gone? Um, two two things really. Do, do you know I uh, also like Raven, I like to I like to get my hands into projects, but uh, uh one of them is hair. I I cut my own hair. What? <laughs> yeah, I do, I, ha I have since seventh grade. Uh, and and I and I also then took that. I've, I've uh, cut other people's. I used to cut Mrs. Lori's hair all the time. I I used to cut her mom's hair, best friend Rex's hair. I I uh, and it's free, so people are like, "Hey, can you, you have time? Can you do it?" So 
Mm-hmm. That's kind of that's kind of that's like my that's like a lump of clay for me. It's like kind of like creating a sculpture on someone's head. Uh, mm-hmm. That and I also love writing and uh, and th- th- I'm going to reveal something here that I'm, I'm actually uh, uh, working on a novel at the moment. I just finished. I, I'm I, I'm into well into chapter four, and I have secured a literary agent in the meantime. And uh, so I'm this is a little side thing I'm doing when I now that we've had quarantine time and I all all of our convention appearances were clo- you know shut down for the spring and summer so nice so wow. got time to, to do some do some writing up. Um, and in there I think that there's going to be a, a memoirs and a, a, an autobiography in the works somewhere down the line uh, and I'm already collect but you know I'm I just turned 60 years old and collecting <laughs> stories over 60 years of life is like a daunting project uh, yeah, idea. So I'm just, I keep a notebook with me and I'm jotting down things as I'm, Oh, that's a fun story. I'll write that down. So I'm, I'm doing, I'm collecting those at the moment while I'm trying to write the novel. Uh, so this is all a little free time thing that it, you know, if see if, and when we get to do uh, come back to produce uh, season four, I may have to put the writing aside for a while because too many words coming in and out of my head are, 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 uh, are they, 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 they wrestle each other and, and nobody wins. <laughs> Can you tell us what the genre is? Oh, oh uh, the, the the novel is uh, it's loosely it's kind of autobiographical. It's loosely based on me from twenty years ago. So so pic- picture what my career was and who I was twenty years ago, and uh, that's before anybody knew my name, by the way. And mm. so uh, it was uh, I was working all the time as a creature actor, but but was kind of a way under the radar. So what would, what would come with that? What frustrations or what what celebrations would come with that? And put that into a character and he makes some different choices than I did make back then. And he goes on a little adventure. Boom. That's all I can say. <laughs> wow. That's exciting. Now oh, uh, that's interesting. With your hair cutting skills, would you be able to cool, uh, cut cool designs into Sorok's beard? <laughs> Probably. Ooh, <I> don't know. <laughs> Give me some of that. Yes, it looks yeah, very yeah, yeah, there it is. Yeah. And, and you know, uh, <laughs> whenever whenever you see me on my social medias, uh, go go from this to a uh, skinhead again, like you know, bald. Uh, that's that's usually for when we're back in production, and I I, I buzz that myself every other day. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Sirak, do you buzz your own hair too? Is he fro- is he frozen? He's not going to dignify that with a response. <laughs> 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 oh, I thought yeah. that was something you guys shared in common was a quick buzz, to keep things simple because you don't yep. want to bald caps. Well, uh, we're just about out of time here. Um, Sirak will be coming back in just a second. In fact, that's him. Um, so, uh, I don't know if you heard what I said, but I was just asking because uh, Doug was saying how he he shaves his head every day when he's working on Discovery, and we we're saying that you might be doing the same thing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can, can you hear me? Yeah, we oh, we hear you great. Yes, yeah. I would be uh, interested in it. Okay, good, good, good. Um, so yeah, I, I heard him also. I heard you also say that. With, would he could he shave in some carvings into my beard? I'm pretty sure he could be good at that too. Oh, yeah. you, heard, you heard that? Yeah. Sorry, let me at it. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, but thank you everybody for joining us, uh, Sirak. Thanks for leaving again. Oops. <laughs> um, but uh, it's been great. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, the fans love this. The fans really appreciate this. Um, it was really cool of you to take the time out of your busy schedules, even though a lot of us aren't working. I know some of you are, you're at least writing novels or Raven, you are working and you know, Doug, you're getting probably calls constantly to do things like this. And we appreciate you doing this to bring some, some cheer and some love and some happiness into people's lives. Cause it's really dark times and everybody's depressed and angry. So it's good that <laughs> It's good that we can not be for a little while. Yeah. Yes. So uh, thank you so much, David, Hannah, Raven. Thank, uh, you. Uh, thank you. And live long and prosper, y'all. Oh, that's a good one. What is that? Oh, David's got a good one. Look at the how. Oh, good, good, good separation there. My gosh. 
<laughs> Great. Uh, thank you very much, guys. And uh, we hope to see you again real soon. Discovery <laughs> Season 3 is going to be amazing. Everybody keeps saying, when's Discovery Season 3 going to happen? When's it going to happen? It's like nonstop, and that can only be a good thing because that means everybody wants it really badly. So yeah. that's it. It's actually a really good thing that people are begging for it. Uh, we're yeah. all looking forward to it. We can't wait. It, it is coming. We can promise you that. We we filmed the whole thing, and it's in post production still now. It's still happening. Yeah. <laughs> we know it is coming. That's for sure. Yeah. Um. Hang on a second. Strock's popping in. Just say goodbye. Oh, uh, screw it, Mark. Anyway, uh, Sirach, we're just saying goodbye to everybody and thanking them for joining us and taking our time. And I want to thank you, Sirach, because I know it can be extremely frustrating when technology is not on our side. And so we want to thank you for sticking with us. And we could hear you fine on everything, but your video was lagging a few times. So three cheers for Sirach for, you know, being a trooper. Thank you, guys. Uh, it's a little bit out of my control, but I, I, I really got a chance to get to know each one of you better. And it was a great opportunity. I look forward to seeing you guys at more conventions and being invited all around to, to meet the fans that love you. Cheers. Oh, love. Thank you. Great. Thanks very much. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you on uh, Discovery Season 3. Looking forward to it. To deal. Okay. Love. Love. Bye, Bye. Bye Hannah. Bye, Bye Reeves. Thank you.